Hey guys, so my wife asked me to make her something for Halloween. So I decided to make a stacked pumpkin. So this is a video for making a stacked pumpkin. So I started out with some, some wire. Uh, the bottom half is going to be a jack-o'-lantern. So he was going to be open on one side, have a mouth open on one side. So I made some wire, <coughs> drilled a hole in a plaque so the wire would fit in the plaque so it would hold on there. And now I'm covering that wire with some aluminum foil to give the, the clay something to hold on to. So I'm just making like a, a half ball oval, not really a ball, kind of an oval thing. So after that I uh, rolled out some pieces. This is uh, not the air dry Sculpey or uh, super light Sculpey. It's um, uh, Sculpey, just normal Sculpey I had a box of. So I'm using it uh, under my projects for filler. So I'm just spreading this all over the, uh, the foil to give me a uh, base to go off of. So for pumpkin number two, so I have the wire sticking up there, so I'm just adding some foil. This pumpkin I decided would just be a pumpkin with no, it won't be a jack-o'-lantern, it'll just be a pumpkin. The bottom will be a jack-o'-lantern, then a pumpkin, then the top will be another jack-o'-lantern. So on the top one I just made, again, a half ball shape and I'm covering that with uh, more clay. Once I cover this, I'm gonna go take it and bake it, and then come back and uh, roll out some Super Sculpey on the thickest pasta machine setting, and then cover it up like I'm doing here. So then once I get this covered, I'm gonna start uh, trying to figure out what I want this thing to look like. I have a slight picture in my head, but I'm not sure exactly how it's gonna come out. So I added a uh, wire in here that's going to support the bottom jaw. And uh, I figured I'd put four arms on this guy, but I'm not sure exactly how they're going to be. Are they going to be horizontal next to each other or vertical, one on top of the other? Here I am trying different poses and see what I like. Looks like they're going to be uh, horizontal. All right, so I'm putting some clay on the bottom jaw. I just uh, needed a piece of wire in there to help hold that thing up. It probably would have been fine the way it was if, if I had just used clay, but uh, sometimes uh, the, the wire helps helps it not deform when you're you're working with it and doing things. So adding a piece of wire in there keeps it in place. So here I'm adding pieces here and there on the head and trying to uh, get a shape that, that I like. You know, just kind of add, take off, add, take off here and there, depending on what you're doing. I didn't, I didn't try to draw this out ahead of time. I didn't have... An exact idea in my head how it was going to be so here I am just trying to figure it out as I go so now I'm trying to make it look less like a snowman and more like a pumpkin so I'm rolling out some snakes of clay and uh, adding some ridges around the, the pumpkins and uh, fleshing out the top of the lip of the bottom jack-o'-lantern here also so I'm just gonna add some ridges here and there to make it more pumpkiny also adding uh, more clay here and there to make it, you know, uh, sometimes the shape doesn't look right for, you know, you just gotta, I need a little bit of clay here, a little bit of clay there to make it look more, more like a pumpkin. So I'm adding some here and there and adding ridges. So after adding all the ridges and feeling like I got them all where I want them, so now I gotta smooth them all out. So I spent a little while smoothing out all these things and blending them in and trying to, to, to make it look nice. <laughs> now I'm making some lines. You know, pumpkins have, you can see the distinct lines in pumpkins and so I'm scoring out some lines that I'm going to follow here. <clears throat> and I also made uh, the, bottom, the bottom lip down there. I made it uh, a misshapen 
doesn't look like a perfect pumpkin. I wanted him to look deformed. And right now I'm t stamping in some textures. Um, I made some texture stamps. I uh, My wife brought home a couple of avocados and one of them had a real good texture on it. So I took some uh, Sculpey and pushed it on there and made a couple stamps out of it. And, and it really looks good. So if you guys uh, want a good texture stamp, uh, get, you, get you an avocado. So I lost the footage. Of, uh, my phone was full and I didn't catch any footage of me making the eyes for the top. Basically I just cut out two triangles and then put a brow over top of them. Right here I have some uh, glow-in-the-dark clay. I took two pieces of glow-in-the-dark clay and shoved them in the eyeballs. I was going to paint them glow-in-the-dark, but I figured the clay holds the light a lot better, so I stuck two pieces of glow-in-the-dark clay in there for his eyeballs. <clears throat> and now I'm adding teeth to the bottom of this guy. I have a, these teeth are already been already baked and they're hard, so I just have a whole pile of teeth I just go through and grab a tooth I think I want to put it in there and I shove it in there of course the forceps help to get them into where I need them to be I also dipped the tip of the like I said in my last video dipped the tip of the uh, tooth into a bacon bond and that holds them in place after they've been baked I like these uh mouths that have these wicked teeth all over the place kind of like a venom I guess looking mouth I like how that that look comes out it looks pretty wicked I do end up adding more teeth than this uh, later on that uh, it's not on film I'm doing the same for the uh, top part of the mouth I have a box full of all kinds of teeth that I've made and some are different colors. These ones are a lighter color. But I plan on painting all these teeth brown anyway. I don't want them to look like real teeth. I want them to look like uh, plant teeth. So they're going to be a brownish green color. I just realized I said I'm going to make plant teeth. Yeah, I guess plants don't have teeth. But I wanted to make it look like they were made out of plant material, I guess you could say. Uh, I decided that... Uh, I needed eyeballs on the bottom of the pumpkin also so here I am I'm I drew a, a, an eyeball and I'm digging out the uh, the clay smoothing it out I'm gonna put some uh, glow in the dark clay into here also I was only gonna have eyes on top but uh, my wife said it looked goofy with eyes on top and a mouth on the bottom with no eyes so I decided to add some eyes then after I sculpted it all and pretty much done with it, uh, my brother suggested I should have put a face on the on the back of the middle pumpkin, and that would have been a pretty cool idea. I should have done that, but I didn't think of it at the time. Maybe next one. So here I am. I'm adding the stem. I just took a, uh, a piece of clay that's tapered on one end, and pretty much just stuck it to the top of the head there, and I'm scoring lines in it, make it look like a, a, a vine, give them a little twist on top and a couple spikes. I also add a curly cue onto it also. I don't know what you call those curly cue things. It's a little vine looking thing, I guess. They start to look more like a pumpkin. So, and if you go to the store and look at the ugly pumpkins, they got all kinds of warts and nubs on them. So that's what I'm doing here. He's not a pretty jack-o'-lantern. He's going to be one that's been carved out of one that a ugly pumpkin. So I'm adding ugly pumpkin parts to it. He's got a lot of pimples. I just go around and adding more texture here and there, adding some more pimples here and there. I did add a couple more ridges in there because uh, the ridges were spaced too far apart and it kind of 
looked weird so I added some more ridges in, in, in between to make it uh, more resembling uh, a pumpkin to me. Uh, this is a, it was a tiny scrub brush that I found, but the bristles are really hard on it. So I'm using the bristles to add some more, pa uh, some more texture to them. I, you know, I have the uh, texture stamp, so I just added some more, like, tiny holes here and there. Okay, so this is after the first bake. He's already been baked, and I'm measuring out how I want the arms to be. I had uh, pre-poked some holes in there where I want them to be, there, but right now I'm measuring out uh, how long I want them to be and the positioning of them. So I'm adding some wire up in here and cutting it and bending it to where I think it should be. Hmm. I could have swore I sped this part up. When you watch these speed up and you watch the normal speed, it's like, wow, you're really slow. Yeah, but that's about how fast it goes. So here I'm taking the arms and I'm wrapping them with uh, some floral wire. I leave some floral wire on the end because I'm going to attach a hand to the end and I'm actually going to use that extra piece of wire on the end to hold the hand on. So to make the fingers on the hand, I took a uh, piece of floral wire and doubled it up and put it in a drill and spun the drill to uh, wrap the wires around each other. So I'm taking those wires and uh, laid out a piece of tape and then I add four fingers to it to the piece of tape and <laughs> here I am trying to shape out the hand. So I'm going to take this uh, hand and I'm going to put it on the arm, the end of the arm there and use the uh, the wire head sticking off the end and wrap it around there. Right now it's kind of out of frame, but uh, luckily I figured that out to reach up and move the camera. Yay me! So basically I'm sticking this on there and then wrap the wire around it to hold it in place. And voila, we have a creepy long fingered hand. So I pretty much repeat this process with all four of the hands on the arms. On uh, this particular arm up front here, I decided it needed three fingers instead of four. I figured they wouldn't all be the same, I guess. So I went with three. <clears throat> so after uh, getting the hands all worked out, I uh, need to cover them with clay. So I decided on the arms I wanted to use cost clay. So what I did is I rolled out some clay on the medium setting on the pasta machine, put the hand on there and cut around the fingers and just wrap it around, wrap the clay around the fingers there and add some on the top of the hand to cover the top of the hand. Uh, turns out pretty easy. So the arms on this pumpkin are made out of vine or twigs or uh, sticks. So I figured uh, the fingers would look cool if they had a twisted um, look to them. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the clay and twisting it to give it a sort of a spiral look on the, uh, the fingers. So it looks like they're like been twisted and deformed into fingers. It makes it look a little more creepy. Just in, in my mind it looks a little more creepy. I don't know about everybody else, but just imagine creepy when you look at that. So anyway, I twisted the fingers up and now I'm uh, putting some uh, texture on, on the hand, you know, just grabbing some balls, tools, and then dragging some lines through them, you know, it's, it's supposed to resemble wood, so wood has texture lines in it, so that's what I'm doing here. So 
So what I, I figured I would stick the arm in the body before finishing putting the clay on the rest of the arm because a couple of these were, I had to use the, the pliers to push them in the body. So I figured it'd be easy enough just to put the uh, clay on the arm while it's in the body instead of trying to uh, push the arm in there after I have clay on it and squash all the clay in different places after I've textured it. So. so here I am adding more clay to the arm. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it's supposed to resemble wicked looking wood. So I just need to wrap the clay around the wire just to make sure the wire is not visible. It can be lumpy, it can be a little misshapen, you know, it's supposed to resemble uh, wood and not uh, pristine wood, so uh, kind of hard to mess that up. So then to texture it out, I'm just uh, using the dental tools to uh, drag some, some lines through it and just here and there to give it a little texture and make it uh, look wood-like, I guess you could say. So there it is. There's one of those curly Q things I was talking about. I just took a piece of like a little snake of clay and then wrapped it around one of the tools and then slid it off the end of the tool to give it that curly shape. So I added a couple of them here and there. Okay, and this is what it looks like with all the arms completed. As you can see the on the finger on that that back left arm how it looks pretty pretty wicked and all the fingers being uh, twisted like that. Again, like every other thing that I paint, I paint it black first. I didn't use the primer on this one. I just got some black paint and just started painting it black. I didn't want to get any paint on the uh, the eyes because that's the glow-in-the-dark clay and that needs to show through so I did hit it a couple times accidentally and all I had to do was just scrape it off with one of the dental tools and it came right off. So I just got Craft Smart Orange. I had a big bottle of it so I've had orange for about three years now and I've really never used it so now I have a chance to. So basically I'm using a mixture of orange and a little brown here and there. I want a little bit of brown on some of the uh, depressed areas also. I don't want to be all just bright orange. <laughs> so I'm just basically uh, getting a mixture of both of them and painting and painting. Like when I, have, when I paint it this way, I don't have to uh, paint it all one color. Make sure you get every little nook and cranny and then come back and do a wash. And then come back and do highlights. So you kind of do your wash first by uh, painting it black first. At least I, I, like the, I really like the way it comes out with the stark contrast between, uh, because you can still see the black areas and I, I really like the way that comes out. So there you go, I built up enough orange on it, and now I'm going to paint the arms. So basically on this I'm just taking, I have like three different colored browns, you can see the bottles over there on the left side there. I didn't want the arms just to be all one color, so I, I, I have brown and I have a couple of different shades of brown, and I also have green in there, I wanted some green areas to be picked up. So on the teeth, I started out with a dark brown, and then I built on top of that with some little lighter brown and some, some green also. And then on top of that, I uh, have some glow-in-the-dark paint that I put a couple coats of glow-in-the-dark paint on there. It makes the teeth look kind of gross, like a, a greenish color paint on there, but uh, I think it came out really nice. 
Here's the finished product. As you can see, because of the cost clay, look at that, I can move the arms around. You can see that greenish color on the teeth. I think that looks pretty good. Kind of looks kind of rotten almost. I think it gives it a little more creepiness. And uh, here we go. Here's the glow in the dark. The eyes glow a little longer than the teeth, but uh, it looks pretty good. I, I really like the way this guy came out. So, guys, uh, there's my Halloween thing. Thanks for watching.